Adolf Robert Thornton Jr. was born on July 27, 1985, in Chicago, Illinois. When he was two years old, his family moved to Memphis, Tennessee. He had two sisters and two brothers. He and rapper Juice World were second cousins. Thornton was mostly raised by his grandmother, Ida May. His parents experienced addictions to crack cocaine, and as a child, he would only see them every few weeks. Dolph said that the community he was from in South Memphis, many of his peers were raised by their grandmothers due to the issues experienced by their parents. As a teenager, Thornton attended Hamilton High School, being a barber on the side from the ages of 12 to 15. From the ages of 16 to 17 and onward, he turned to the streets for a means of income. His grandmother often did not allow Thornton to have friends visit their home, but on occasion, let homeless friends stay with the family. In 2008, due to encouragement from his friends, young Dolph released his first mixtape paper route campaign. Seeing its local popularity, he decided to fully invest himself into rap. Two years later, he formally established his label, Paper Root Empire in 2010, an independent record label inspired by the likes of Master P and Baby, and subsequently released his first mainstream mixtape, Welcome to Dolph World that same year, hosted by Atlanta DJ Scream. In 2014, young Dolph would make an appearance on Sway in the Morning to discuss the project. During the interview, Dolph would touch on his decision not to sign a record deal with Yo Gotti, explaining that he would rather see his own investment in himself through than latch onto another artist's movement. Dolph would later point to Yo Gotti taking offense to Dolph's decision as the root of their beef, although Gotti has never confirmed that notion. The friction between Young Dolph and Yo Gotti became apparent in 2016 when Dolph sent a subliminal shot at his Memphis counterpart. Using Twitter to let his feelings be known, Dolph alleged that Yo Gotti wasn't fond of his growing success, tweeting, Bro went from being my Gubber One fan and wanting to sign me to being my biggest hater, in reference to Gotti's failed attempt to ink Dolph to his CMG label. Despite Dolph not mentioning Gotti by name, it was clear who Dolph's words were aimed at and would set off a chain of events that would result in the beef escalating quickly. Young Dolph raised a few eyebrows in February of 2016 when it was announced that he would be naming his debut album, King of Memphis. Fellow Memphis rapper Yo Gotti had repeatedly referred to himself as the King of Memphis, so Dolph's album title seemed like a shot directed at Gotti. Although Gotti would make no public comment on Dolph's decision, those in the Memphis rap scene, as well as the rap community as a whole, considered the title a slight towards Gotti and Dolph's attempt at overtaking the throne. During an appearance on Hot 97 February 2016, young Dolph downplayed his beef with Yo Gotti, going as far as to acknowledge the rapper as being one of his earliest supporters. It's really overstated, Dolph responded, when asked about the rumored tension between the two Memphis reps. Young Dolph also cleared the air about the title of his LP, King of Memphis stating that it wasn't meant to be a diss of any kind and that it was more inspired by him and his crew's mentality. The young Dolph and Yo Gotti beef began to take a turn for the worse on March 2, 2017, when Gotti's CMG artist Black Youngsta posted a clip on his own Instagram account disparaging Dolph and calling into question his claim of being King of Memphis. Black Youngsta upped the ante by showing up in young Dolph's stomping grounds in Memphis with a few of his goons. Capturing the scene on video, Black Youngsta and his crew took a stroll through South Memphis's Castalia neighborhood on the hunt for young Dolph, while armed with heavy artillery. Although Black Youngsta and company would not run into Dolph, the clip was enough to know that this particular beef is deeper than rap. When Black Youngsta began dissing young Dolph, many believed that Yo Gotti was responsible for his artist's decision to take the beef into his own hands. But the CMG boss would state otherwise. During an interview with Tim Westwood, Yo Gotti wouldn't address a beef with Young Dolph. On September 9, 2016, months after exchanging words with Young Dolph, Black Youngsta declared the beef as squash during an interview. Sharing that Yo Gotti actually liked Young Dolph despite their tension, Youngsta laid the beef to rest on his end. But Dolph would not acknowledge that the war of words were over, leaving the door open for further turmoil. Young Dolph dropped a diss track levied against Yo Gotti that saw the rising star taking the gloves off and throwing jabs below the belt. In addition to vicious broadsides like I Don't Know No Gangsters That Beef With Dykes and alluding to having relations with the mother of Gotti's child, Dolph also paints his nemesis as a hater, 
the rap community took a deep breath when it was reported that Young Dolph was the target of a shooting in Charlotte, North Carolina, in which over 100 rounds were fired at his vehicle. Fortunately, Dolph was unscathed, due to the SUV he was riding and being bulletproof, but the incident did little to phase the Memphis rapper. He hit the stage at a local venue later that night, where he performed his Yo Gotti diss track, Play With Yo Bitch, a sign that what many deemed as a message in relation to his beef with Yo Gotti was not a deterrent in any fashion. Months after declaring his beef with Yo Gotti as old news, news broke that young Dolph was the victim of a shooting in Hollywood and rushed to the hospital. While details were scarce, it was reported that Dolph was outside of Show Palace, near the intersection of Hollywood and Highland, at the time of the shooting. A day after news broke of young Dolph's being shot in Hollywood, LAPD announced that an associate of Yo Gotti was charged with attempted murder in connection to the incident. According to Detective Megan Aguilar, a spokeswoman for the LAPD. Corey McClendon, a member of Yo Gotti's entourage, was arrested the day after the shooting and held on $1 million bail. LAPD were still looking for two other men believed to have been involved that could possibly be connected to the shooting. After being arrested on suspicion of attempted murder, the day prior in connection to the attempt on young Dolph's life, Yo Gotti associate Corey McClendon was released without charges. Law enforcement have yet to make any other arrests in connection to their investigation. On November 17, 2021, Thornton was fatally shot in Memphis whilst visiting Makita's homemade butter cookies, a bakery he frequently visited whenever he was back home. Two gunmen in a white two-door Mercedes-Benz gunned him down. An autopsy revealed that Thornton had 22 gunshot wounds from bullet entries and exits. Some wounds were sustained in the forehead and back. Crowds of hundreds of people swarmed the scene of Thornton's death for hours. Police had to prevent individuals from entering the area while they investigated. Tennessee House Representative London, Lamar, and Memphis Councilman J.B. Smiley reacted by calling for a curfew in Memphis to prevent civil unrest and violence. Thornton was laid to rest on Tuesday, November 30, 2021. A service was held at First Baptist Church Broad Street. The family's caravan of black SUVs was escorted by security and Memphis police to the cemetery across from Hamilton High School, Young Dolph's alma mater. On January 5, 2022, police identified one of the suspects responsible for the murder as 23-year-old Justin Johnson and issued a first-degree murder warrant. A reward of up to $15,000 for information on the suspect was offered by the Tennessee authorities. Johnson had an established history of criminal charges and violence as well as ties to organized criminal gangs, and was a rapper under the name Straight Drop. Another suspect, 32-year-old Cornelius Smith, who was arrested for the theft of the car used in Dolph's murder, was indicted on first-degree murder, weapons possession, and theft charges on January 11th. The same day, Johnson was captured by police in Indiana after law enforcement received over 500 tips leading to his arrest. 27-year-old Shundale Barnett, a passenger of the vehicle Johnson was driving, was also arrested. On January 12th, Johnson and Smith were indicted on first-degree murder and other criminal charges, while Barnett was charged with being an after-the-fact accessory. After Johnson and Smith struggled to find legal representation, they were given an ultimatum by Judge Lee Coffey. If you have a lawyer hired, that's fine. But as I told you 10 days ago, I cannot allow you to sit in jail week after week, month after month without a lawyer. If you don't have a lawyer hired on February 4th, I'm going to hire a private attorney to represent both of you all. He claimed he was unable to afford to hire an attorney. On February 11th, both Johnson and Smith pleaded not guilty to first-degree murder. On November 10th, 2022, a third suspect was indicted for the murder of young Dolph and the conspiracy to murder Thornton. 43-year-old Hernandez Govan, who is alleged to have ordered the murder of young Dolph. It is likely that the trial for those accused of murdering young Dolph will not occur until 2024, due to the severity of charges and the discovery procedures by the defendant's attorneys. The city of Memphis approved street renaming for a street in the honor of Thornton. The street was changed to Adolph Young Dolph Thornton Jr. Avenue, which is located on the intersection of Dunn Avenue and Airways Boulevard, just east of Castilla Heights where Dolph was raised, and not far from where Dolph was killed.